Guys, what is up? This is CD Mangaka, and we're doing something a little special for the day. I decided to go ahead and do the series anyway. This is the uh, midfielding spots for Call of Duty. Um, we're looking at Modern Warfare 2 here, but rest assured, when Black Ops comes out, I will do it for Black Ops, just so you can learn it. But I'm going to do it with Modern Warfare 2 so I can practice, get a bet, good idea on how to present it, and um, kind of roll with it in a way. So we're going to get started. I'm actually recording this commentary live. I figure that's the best way, you know, while I'm in the zone and thinking about it right now as I'm recording the gameplay, that is the best way for me to um, talk about it and present to you guys. So uh, let's take a look at the map real fast. Uh, for I got free spectating on. We, all right. So over here is the Navy SEAL spawn point. And then this is the Navy SEAL spawn, and their flag as you can see is right here this is so this is the navy seals flag you know or is that even or is that the op 4 well it says the op 4 sign so that might be the op 4 now let's have them fly on over the map and the other flag the navy seals flag i think is the one that's supposed to get maybe is this one right here i know the op 4 generally spawns in this canyon right here this pipeline canyon and then we're going to hover up here and take a look at the map I'll do my best to maybe find us a way if I can highlight this stuff as we talk about it. So, all right, you can see the flag, and then there's you can see the cave structure at the top corner of the screen. Let me adjust it a little bit more for you guys. And so this is the flag routes that you can go, and generally a lot of the action is associated on the left side of the map, where the AC-130 plane is, as well as big bunker. That's what I call it right here. Um, that small bunker that in the center of the screen where the people like to post up a bit. And you can kind of see why, because there's a spawn, because the spawn, both the spawn points, the quickest way to the flag is through the middle, you know. And for the Navy SEALs starting off, or off, uh, you kind of cut through big bunker, try and come into the poppy fields and get to their flag right here. For the Op Four, you would kind of come through the middle of the map and try to go through the cave, and you're gonna get a lot of crossfire fights going on here, stuff like that. Now, in midfield, and effectively control the map, there are generally uh, a couple spots that you want to post up in. So um, let's spawn in real fast. As a task force one for one, excuse me. I said Navy SEALs all this time, I'm or just a retard. Captain oh, so this flag. is the task force one for one spawn. All right, so, um, I flipped that up, I guess, but I think they trade sides, so it doesn't matter. We got the two spawn points in mind. Now, as we kind of go along here, uh, a, bad milling, a bad mill filling spot is the big bunker right here. Because uh, you come out here, I mean, you get a lot of the action, sure, but it's also a high-profile area. A lot, there's not a lot of cover that you can get. You can crouch and whatnot. But also these explosive barrels in here. And generally, this is because it's such a closed quarters. It's a prime spot for grenades, new tubes, and uh, nasty things like that to come get you in. Uh, how I advise to watch this area, but you gotta watch this area though, because it's such a high-traffic area. So I would advise that it's a defender spot where a defender would basically kind of watch like this. You know, get behind that box right there, or get behind um, this wall. And you know, just kind of clip a bit, maybe even have a sniper in there. So, but the first mid spot, midfielding spot I'm going to show you guys is the middle of the map, and this is going to work for both sides. So, starting off with, um, we'll call that B Dom flag, the B flag, I guess, is the AC 130, like the whole body of it. It's great because this AC 130 tail gives you a great spot to clip from. Because they're spawning over here, they'll also spawn back by their own flag and come through out the cave. So, if you can't buy, if you kind of stay right behind here, you can get in a lot of gunfire. And uh, kind of rack up some kills, and also be sure to play around with it a bit. He also had the opportunity to kind of sneak on over here into the head of the plane, and also do some work here. Just use this whole AC-130. This is one mythling spot, the entire AC-130 structure. Play with that bit. It's a high-profile area. You might uh, have, want to have an experienced midfielder handle that. So now um, let's shimmy on over to the next midfielding spot that I would advise. I got Marathon and Light went on to make this go as fast as I can. I'm not going to do live video cuts. So... Sniper Hill, this is what I like to call it. This is like West Side Air Defense, I think, in the official MLG callouts. But I, my team and I call it Sniper Hill because people like to go up on that hill right there and snipe. So we call this whole area Sniper Hill. You want a midfielder back here. Now, why a midfielder back here? Now, to be honest, in Capture the Flag, this place is so badly overlooked. Nobody, and I repeat, nobody is ever over here. It is so, it is slow. There is nothing to it. You can camp the entire game, not get anything. However, it's important that you control it because there will be occasional people who come down through the cave, go this way after they get frustrated with their attempts to push through Big Bunker or the middle map. They'll occasionally try to flank over here, so it's vital if you stay over here. 
Also, this way, if you were to control this area, your flag runners have a great place to run. As you see, the, there's, the flag is right there. My flag runner can pick it up, run down the steps, and up through Sniper Hill, where, as midfielder, I can stay right here, cover him, and make sure that nobody gets after him. It's a great spot in midfield. It's a slow spot. I'll probably advise a new guy to probably manage it. And don't forget, you have this whole area to play with. You know, I like to sit behind that turret right there, but you can also come right here and, you know, surprise him. You can come right here. The whole area is yours to play with. Oh. Alright, so in review, two midfielding spots are the Sniper Hill and the AC-130. Now, a quick note to make is that, hey, well, I'm, I'm going to do this while I'm free spectating. On the Sniper Hill, I mean, you want to control both points. If, you're, if you have this flag, the flag back here by B-Bomb, we'll call it the B-Bomb flag and then the B-Dom flag. I'll try to enunciate that best I can. Basically, what you want to do is watch... That little crook right there, because people will come up through this alleyway right there, and then this back point right here. They'll try to come through here, and so the best thing to do is use these two structures the best you can. Also, a quick thing, if you're being slewthy from it, you can camp right behind here and pick them off as they come from this point right here. Do you guys, which guys do you prefer, me walking around person telling this or the free spectating? I'm, I'm kind of digging the free spectating right now. Now let's look for this flag. Also, for the B-bomb flag, AC-130 is also a viable option. You don't want to go big bunker. Again, that's just a lot of crap right there. But the AC-130 tail is the best spot. Let me show you why. Because, one, you can clip from this spot right here. You can look into their spawn point. You can also kind of manage small bunker away. That's a, that's a dangerous zone. And then you can also look into Pipeline Canyon and pick off people before, you know, they go around here. And also, if you set up a spawn trap, take over the pop fields, and they start spawning Pipeline Canyon, you have a great spot already to start picking people off. And again, you can kind of... But on this side, you can't really use the head of the AC-130. Uh, you probably could if you want to, but I mean, it's just the danger points for this area are small bunker, and and if you do not have control of Sniper Hill, Sniper Hill. So that's that's another reason why this midfielding spot is important to have on Sniper Hill, because it helps this midfielding spot do the best it can. By controlling this area, he only has to worry about this half of the map. It's kind of a great little key idea. All right, so that's Afghan. Now I'm going to cut the commentary right here, and then we're going to show you another map which will be whatever I decide. Okay guys, now we're moving on to Estate. All right, now let's uh, take a quick overview of this map real fast. I'm doing Estate because I know this map so well. As you can see, we got one flag right here, and we'll call this the house flag. Yeah, the house flag. And then the other flag is located over... There, you can. can you see the red glowing thing? I'm going to zoom in for you. That right there, that is the red flag. That is the other flag. We'll call it the power station flag. So if you kind of get a look here, you kind of have an upward battle going on for the people who have the power station flag spawn. they got to get up to the house and they got to interfere with it. And the flag routes, you know, people could run through greenhouse and go over the back of it, but that's a rarely taken path. That's a rarely taken path. Or you can, you know, go lake outside or up the middle. There's a, a whole bunch of routes to do. But now let's um, get into a character real fast. Go, we'll go task force again. Alright, so when you're midfielding on the house flag, the thing I like to do is control lake house. Lake house is a great area of control. It will block out the enemy. It takes control of literally, you can take control of one half of the map quite literally by controlling the lake, the boathouse, lake house, whatever you want to call it. So when you have the house flag, the point I like to do is to kind of, I can come up here and you'll generally find a lot of snipers on that roof right there that I'm shooting. you also get occasionally they'll spawn and beat on and beat on the run through a bit. But I don't like to play this area all the time because a lot of people, if they can be sneaky, they can come up this pathway right here around this truck and blast you. Or they can come up the set of stairs right here and come get you. There's a lot of stuff. So occasionally if there's not a lot of people going here, if I can push up, if I have a guy running with the flag, he's coming this way, I'll push up right here and cover him. You know, but when I'm waiting on people to kind of come back, what I generally like to do is, you know, I can come by this car, truck, clip from here, this couch works great, or, or the boathouse itself. Now, to flip the script, okay, I'm not going to change anything right now, but let's say I, I have the power station flag, and that's the flag I have to defend. So in midfield here, I'd come up through here. To get to this spot, it's a little bit harder to get to because the house is like a straight-on rush, but I generally come up this side flank around this truck and kind of observe because I remember they're coming from the house so I gotta watch this spot right here 
If I need to, I'll push up to the truck. And then what I'll do generally is get in the lake house right here. And kind of be careful and watch that second balcony floor. When you have the power station flag, midfielding is a very offensive spot when you're control, trying to control lake house. Using this white truck right here and cutting off people is a great way to do it. Also, you know, this wall, play with the area a bit, but just keep your eyes glued on the house. And just try to shut off this area because they have to come in and this spot right here that I'm shooting. So basically, you just post them away where you can watch that area right there. You don't want to come too close, though, with your team. Otherwise, people will start spawning right there at the back of Lake House, and that will screw you up. But generally, if you can stay right here, they'll spawn right here, they'll spawn back there, and you'll get a lot of people who come up this way, who, if you're down there, you can plaster them right here. The thing to watch, though, is that interior of the house right there, as well as that second floor. Now, let's find. Now let's get to the other midfielding spot real fast. Do, 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 do. We got, we're going to cut through the house right here. House should be controlled by the defenders. One guy watching Lake House in the middle, the other guy kind of watching Greenhouse a bit. Now this is a new midfielding spot that I've recently experimented with and I found a lot of success with. It's this spot right here. Now we're going to go back, shift perspective. We are defending house flag, all right? So I am on, you know, we're, I'm defending the house flag. So right here is the bet is a good spot. You have a straight view of their flag. This is the offensive spot for the house as far as midfielding goes. And again, you can kind of cut off this side of the map. You can generally stop people from flagging up through greenhouse, greenhouse again there, and you give an early warning. You know, if you get killed, you can call out to the defenders in the house saying, oh, the guy coming up through this way, and defenders can turn on them. Now, one point right here is that you also have, you do not, you, if you want to, you can push C Dom, but, you know, and that's a very dangerous spot. That's the one spot because seeing in those windows is a very hard thing to do, and you can often get sniped. So that's why I generally like to play on this side and kind of barely push this corner just in case there's something in that house watching. And generally, they'll also spawn C Dom, run right through here, and you can plaster them. So, this spot for when you're defending is a great mid spot, and you'll get a lot of traffic going on. You gotta be very careful, too, because there's not as much cover that you can play with. I mean, it's visual cover, but not physical. Now, to flip the script, we're defending Power Station Flag. We're going to run up through here. And Greenhouse. What you want, basically, is Greenhouse. You don't want to push into the house and force their spawn, though. Basically, what you want to do is kind of just peek through these doors and try and get anyone who's back here. Alright, you can play... Okay, hold on, we had a bit of a technical issue. My camera died on me, so I had to get the charger in. Anyways, as I was saying, I like to come around the back side of Greenhouse and assume this spot right here. I can kind of look up there and kind of pick off people. Occasionally, you'll find guys on that back railing right there I'm centered in at. And also try and come up through here on that spot right there. Sometimes you'll find a sniper in that corner right there through the stun app. So you can kind of come up here and poke around just a little bit. Don't go in the house, and I wouldn't push past the greenhouse like where I'm running off to right now. I'd stay back here in this wood. This is probably as far as I would go. But I mean, if you can do that, and your goal as a midfielder is to probably cover through the flag. So let's take a quick review of that. All right, let's change team to spectator. I got better at that. So when you're defending the house flag, Midfielding spot is Lake House, and you want to watch their spawn down that hill. Play that area as best you can. And then you want to have that little, um, you want to control the little stream that comes through this area right here. This little brook, canal, whatever. You, and you want to control this midfield area and look directly at their flag and see them. For when you're defending the power station flag, you want to push up on the greenhouse and just stay back there and kind of put, pick people off at the back of the house and then you also want lake house and observe the front of the house if you can do this you can kind of sandwich the teams in anyways that's going to be the end of this first episode of the midfielding guide let me know what you guys like i know i don't have any of the diagrams and stuff that t martin has and i know this is kind of poorly presented but i think but i'm hoping i did get the point across i'm hoping i did help you guys out anyways just give me some feedback on the series whether or not you like it and with Black Ops, I'll definitely do a better job because I will have theater mode to work with. I can use theater mode and record it and then, you know, kind of work with that a bit. So, anyways, thank you guys for watching this CD Mangaka midfielding series, guys. Signing out.